Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a special meeting of the Springfield Township Board of Trustees. Uh, tonight, we are having a public hearing on the permissive motor vehicle license uh, fee, and there's going to be an opportunity for um, information on this topic, and we would also, anyone that is here that would like to uh, uh, speak, you know, to give us your opinions, uh, for us to answer any questions, we'll be happy to do that. Uh, Mr. Burning, could we start with the roll call, please? Yes, Ms. Davis. Present. Mr. Burning. Present. Mr. Hanala. Present. All the trustees are present. And uh, next, would everyone please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll start off this public hearing. Um, Mr. Gilbert, uh, as a township administrator, could you give us a uh, overview? Sure, Mr. Of the, of the issues. Absolutely, thank you. So, as you indicated tonight, we're here to propose and hear comments regarding uh, the recently enacted um, legislation from last year, House Bill 62, with authorized local governments to uh, initiate a new $5 permissive motor vehicle license fee. And I think it necessitates some context, Mr. Harnell, as to, as to why we're here and, and why the state took that action to even authorize it to begin with. Uh, probably seven, eight years ago, maybe longer at this point, I apologize, the years are blending together, the state made some significant cuts to local government for the township, probably estimated around two and a half million dollars a year. A big portion of that obviously was the estate tax. Another portion of that, and, and the, the other significant portion of that was the local government fund. As opposed to reinstating the portion of the local government fund that they had taken away from local governments, the state simply decided to keep that revenue, but in, in, in instead of replacing it, offered local governments a new way to raise revenue which is basically what we have here tonight. It was a tax shift um, from the state level to the local level. Back in 1997, the township passed the one and only road levy that we have today. So as a township, we're somewhat referred to as a la carte government. What I mean by that is we have individual tax levies for these specific services that we provide one for police, one for fire, and one for roads. The road levy is one mil. It generates about $500,000 a year, and it was passed back in 1997. And at that time, it generated a half million dollars a year as well. The way property taxes work is that they're fixed based on the assessed valuation of the properties at the time it was enacted. In Springfield Township, we have about a 35 to $40 million road issue meaning that if we were to bring all of our roads up to good condition tomorrow, it would cost between 35 and $40 million. We obviously don't have the revenue to do that. Prior to those cuts, we knew that we had infrastructure issues and not an adequate source of revenue to pay for those. So unsuccessfully, we attempted three different road levies, all of which failed. So we had to find alternative ways to tackle this road and infrastructure issue that we have here in Springfield Township. We have about 400 streets and about 90 lane miles of road. Most communities are just passing road levies or doing whatever they can, and most of them just aren't keeping up similar to what we have, which is not enough revenue to pay for the road issues as they become issues each year. So, not only did we have a road issue prior to the, the, the cuts in the estate tax and the local government fund, that problem was exacerbated after those state cuts. So what did we do? A few things. One, we went out and passed a joint economic development zone, which brings in now earnings tax revenue from individuals working in Springfield Township. 
that has covered the gap that the state cuts me but remember as i said we had an issue with funding infrastructure problems even previous to those cuts so it just got us back to even essentially additionally through our neighborhood master planning committee which are 60 residents from comprised of the 12 different sections of the township that we uh, parceled off to draw people from to be part of this committee they have proposed an idea of doing assessments as opposed to additional property tax levies what that entails is when we go into an area a particular neighborhood we identify streets and in order to rehabilitate that street we meet with the neighborhood and propose a process by which we utilize existing tax revenue, the one mill road levy, a portion of that, a portion of the JEDGE revenue, and then coupled with an assessment. Assessments generally range anywhere from 45 to 50 to 75 to $80 a year, depending on the severity of the, the need of the road reconstruction, as well as how many houses are on the street, because it just depends um, on what the numbers are on a particular neighborhood uh, for what that assessment would be. The assessment process really allows us to negate the need for additional property taxes in the future. So as I was explaining to a couple prior to the, the meeting starting, think of the assessment process as a road levy for your own particular street. The beautiful part about it is, is that the, the assessment doesn't start until your road is fixed and it only lasts for 10 years and the money can only be spent on your road. So that, those two methods are primarily how we're funding uh, road projects going forward. It's working, and, and I'll go through some stats here in just a second to explain how it is working, but I think it's important to realize that the, the MVL fee as well as the permissive MVL fee doesn't generate a significant amount of money I mean we're talking about the, the, there's really two different types there's I'll take that back there's really three there's, there's one at the state level that townships get five percent of what the state charges so it goes into a pot five percent of that fee goes into a pot and that five percent is in disseminated among all townships statewide which there's over 1300 of them so that amounts to about $37,000 a year that Springfield Township gets out of the state pot. Then there's one at the county level, and it's a convoluted formula, but essentially the county collects a $5 fee. That 30% of that gets put into a pot, and then that 30% is disseminated to townships throughout Hamilton County, which amounts to just over $102,000 a year to Springfield Township. Then there's a $5 fee that Springfield Township collects, which is $185,000. So all being told, you're looking at just a little over $300,000 a year in motor vehicle license fees. Those fees currently are being utilized for infrastructure projects, mainly preservation and uh, revitalization projects in small portions of streets throughout the township. The state, through House Bill 62 last year, authorized townships and, frankly, municipalities, not just townships, but cities in general, to levy an additional $5 fee for annual vehicle registrations to help provide additional revenue for road resurfacing projects. So that's what we're proposing tonight, is to help our revenue shortfalls with this little bit of money to help us further our road resurfacing efforts. Since 2015, and, I, and I've heard a lot of talk throughout the community, I've, I've fielded a lot of questions about, well, I thought that's what the JEDGE revenue was for. And as I indicated previous, even without the state cuts and prior to the JEDGE revenue, we were having funding issues for road projects. However, we did indicate during the process of adopting the JEDS that we would, if possible, 
utilize additional judge revenue to put toward infrastructure which we've been doing since two thousand and fifteen we've utilized almost three million dollars in judge revenue for roads two point seven million dollars has come from the road district fun and we've received a little over three million dollars in grant funding so all told, almost $9 million in road projects have been completed since 2015. We've improved 97 of the township's 400 streets in that same time frame. So a quarter of the township roads have been rehabilitated in the last five years. That's prog progress that hasn't been made in this community in decades. Mainly it's because of two significant things. One is the assessment process and well, actually, it's, I, I take it back. It's, it's three. It's the assessment process. It's the judge revenue as well as grant funding. Those are the three reasons why we've been able to accomplish what we've been able to do with the road projects since 2015. So the amount of money we're talking about tonight with a $5 fee would generate a little less than $200,000 a year. Is that going to move the needle tremendously toward making up the gap that we have in, in revenue dedicated for road resurfacing projects? No. Will it help? Sure. It'll help us make some of those small improvements in areas where a road doesn't need to be completely rehabilitated. And it also will help us make sure that the roads that we do rehabilitate, we can put um, product on those right after they've been done so that that particular project lasts longer than the 10 to 15 year useful life that's predicted by our civil engineers. So th that's why I guess we're proposing it. Uh, and at this time, I'll, I'll take any questions of the board, but that I think pretty much sums it up. Um, it, it's, a, it's important to realize that the, the only revenue that we have discretion over where to use it is the general fund. The amount of money that's generated from the police levy or the fire levy legally can only be spent on those two things. And the same with the one mill road levy that generates a half million. That can only be spent on roads, and, which is obviously what we do with it. I think it's also important to realize that while I understand taxes are high, believe me, I get it, I understand it, 75% of the property taxes you pay do not come to Springfield Township. 50 to 60% of those go to the school district and 20 to 25 percent of those go to the county so springfield township gets a quarter of every dollar you pay in property taxes and we provide police fire roads parks everything that we do general government comes from that 25 percent of the property taxes so i think that's also important to, to realize and a, a lot of people i think to see that tax bill and think it all comes to us which is actually not three quarters of it we do not see or touch so just wanted to make that point as well one right. other one other point that I want to make. Chris mentioned the $3 million in grant funding. And just to give you an idea of how hard we're going after grant funding in trying to get the road problem that we have under control, if you go throughout the county, the 40 some odd municipalities in the county, all of them have major road problems, infrastructure problems. It's, we're not the only one. Um, but what we've been able to do Last year, there was only $3 million in grant funding available in Hamilton County. Okay, so you got 46 jurisdictions fighting for $3 million in grant funding. We got over a million dollars of the $3 million for Springfield Township. This year, there was about $10 million in skip grant funding. We got a little over $2 million. So in the last two years, we got 30 and 20% of the grant funding from the state for skip through skip grants to help pay for roads. And obviously it took a lot of work for us to do that, Mike and his team, and we were able to get a significant amount of funds. The, the, the grants we just got for $2 million, we hadn't planned on spending that much because we didn't think there was any way we'd get that kind of help. But since we did get $2 million, we have to come up with $4 million because, the, well, $2 million, and then they'll give us the other two to get to the $4 million that we'll spend. We weren't planning on spending $2 million of our money on that this year 
but we made adjustments and did it because you can't beat 50% of it being paid for through skip grants. We've been very fortunate and a lot of it has to do with the hard work of our service department that they got us that type of funding. So we're not sitting on our hands trying to figure out, okay, if we've charged $5 extra for license plates, we get another $180,000, that's gonna fix everything because it's not really significant in the grand scheme of things. But it's one of the few things the state gave us back when they took away the local government funds that they've taken away. And they, they actually took away part of it and then they turned around and took away another part of it. And John Kasich did that to balance the budget for the state of Ohio and end up with a $2 billion surplus so he could run for president. And it wasn't just Springfield Township. It was the city of Cincinnati, every city, township, municipality got the money sucked back from the state. The deal with the local government fund was the money will come to the state and then they'll give us a portion of it back to run our governments. And when uh, Governor Kasich decided that he needed to look better to run for president, he went out and decided to take most of that money back to make, you know, pet, spend on his pet projects and get a surplus. So it, as you can see, we're doing things like having people, and when we've had communities, we've asked them, hey, if we fix your road this year, are you willing to pay $85 a, a year for the next 10 years if your road's done this year? We've had probably over 90% of the people raise their hand and say, yes, we'll, we'll do it, right? We're happy to get our road done. There's 15 different projects throughout the township that we've done that with. And that money comes back to us over a number of years. So it's not like we have to spend the money and then over the next 10 years, we get back $85 from each homeowner to, you know, to try to help get the road problem more under control. To give you an example, uh, in 2016, we had 120 good roads. Today, we have 195. So 75 roads have gone from, you know, either poor or fair to good. We had 120 poor roads, now we have 96. We were able to get 24 of the poor roads. Obviously, those are the most expensive to take care of because you have to go all the way down to the bottom. What are they, eight times more expensive than, than taking a fair road and making it good? But even in that case, we had 109 fair roads, and now we have 160. So if you look at good and fair roads today, we have over 300 and we have 96 roads that are still in poor condition. And our goal is to continue to fight this problem as we have over the last, like Chris said, just in the last five years, we spent $9 million on roads and we've only been able to do it through all the processes that Chris just explained. So that's where we are. And I, I think the, the numbers that I shared with you before do not account for 2020. So as Mark indicated regarding the, the $2 million of grant funding for 2020 and 21, that wasn't included in that 3 million. That was just through the end of 19, the numbers that I so actually, actually fighting for. Almost 13 million. Yeah, so. and then I think additionally, one thing is it bears mentioning, back in 97 when that one mil levy was passed, that $500,000 could pave about one mile of road. Today, it can pave about a half mile of road. So road reconstruction costs have doubled in that time frame, and our revenue from that one mill road levy has stayed flat. So. And, and I would like to introduce Mike Gould. Mike is the uh, uh, is our head of our um, public works department, and he is uh, he spearheads his he does a lot of the work to get these grants. Uh, he's been very successful in knowing how to apply for them. And uh, whereas other jurisdictions will hire, you know, professional engineers and stuff, we've been able to do a lot of the things in-house and actually been able to get better results than some of the ones that hire it out to professionals. Um, but we, we've done a lot of talking here. We'd like to hear from you. Is there anyone here that would like to uh, come up? I would ask, ma'am, that you please come up to the uh, microphone, state your name and address here at the podium. and. You were just the first. Yeah, and we would, we would like to hear from you, yes. Sure, my name is Sarah Gross. I live on Harbury Drive. We've lived here for about five years, and I will say I'm a concerned resident. We came from Crosby Township, where we participated a lot in, in the township out there and in the spending. 
And um, I'm gonna ask for forgiveness first, but um, as a resident, I feel like there's some irresponsible fiscal spending going on here in Springfield Township. Um, and that is screamed on every street I drive on with those blue street signs. The street sign on my corner was perfectly fine. It was green. I don't need a blue sign all over the township with the township logo. If we really have funding issues, why are we changing all of the street signs and spending those mo that money? It's not free. The labor to install them is not free. You want me to respond to that? If you'd like. Okay. There's a state law that requires us to change those. There's a new standard. The previous signs didn't meet the state standard, so we have to change them anyway. We do all of the sign making in-house. So okay. the fact that we put a, a, a logo on it doesn't cost us any more. We have a sign shop at our public works department and we create all those in-house. So we're, we're mandated to, to replace them. Yeah, okay, also. but I will say that logos cost money. <laughs> They're sorry? not, logos do cost money. The, the, I know, you can say it's nickels, but still. Well, fair. Okay, <laughs> fair. All right, and then um, one of the other concerns that I have, it seems like every time there's a funding hike around here, the real estate signs pop up really quickly. And um, my concern is that uh, what I would call responsible neighbors are kind of getting fed up with Springfield Township. I know that you guys get 25% and that we have a ridiculous school tax levy, um, a, a ridiculous amount of money going to the school, one of the highest in the state. Um, but I'm concerned that um, if this continues, we're going to end up as a township with a whole bunch of subsidized housing and more and more rental property and that we're going to lose the standard of housing that we come because I think people are fed up. And um, I would challenge the township to look for more creative funding. So this is probably not a township issue, but what I see is a township issue. And granted, I came from the country. I work at PNG, so I drove through Springfield Township, and this has got to be the worst driving in all of Cincinnati. Um, I personally was involved in a traffic accident where somebody ran the red light and T-boned me. On any given day, all day long, the light is clearly red and cars continue to pass through. It seems like if we started actually um, forcing drivers to obey the traffic laws, that you could generate a whole bunch of money. $100 a ticket, you could give out tickets all day long. In the, in the, uh, the uh, neighborhood that I live in, the stop signs, those are ran all day long, and I, I'm grateful that a Springfield Township officer comes out. Every time I call them, they're there within an hour, but they only give warnings. Uh, on numerous occasions, I, I feel like we're, you know, responsible drivers. You could hear um, tires squealing behind us because the light had turned yellow before we got to the intersection, and that means you stop. Which light are you referring to? Any light. But uh, particularly, one that's really bad is pulling off of Greenfield onto North Bend. Yeah. That is a horrendous light. The residents know you don't go when it turns green. You wait, you wait, you wait, you slowly inch forward. We waited and waited, everybody had stopped. We pulled out and even though everybody was stopped, a car came flying through and almost hit us. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why are we not generating revenue with traffic violations? You rarely see traffic violations. I, and I, I guess, and hopefully we'll get back to the MVL fee here in a second, but regarding that particular issue, this isn't a reason why we don't do it, so don't take it this way, but I think there's a misconception that when we write tickets, we make money. In fact, if they're contested and we have to send an officer to court, generally that's an overtime, and usually writing tickets cost us money, doesn't make us money. So by the time they, we, we pay what the court gets and we send an officer down there overtime, it ends up costing us money, not making well, money. It, now, it doesn't mean that we don't write tickets because right. of that, but 
we don't make money on them either. And I think that's a mis misnomer that sometimes get gets perpetuated. Creative. I I know with traffic cams or something. I just I just want this board to think of other ways of generating income because this feels like a penalty and, and we, again. And I think yeah. the JEDGE revenue is a perfect way that we did that. Can JEDGE I, revenue says, now yeah. individuals that work here but don't live here right. pay that, and, and that's a significant source of revenue now that we're putting toward roads. I understand. So, and then the assessment process as well as, so in lieu of property tax, we're trying to find everything we can in lieu of property tax. And um, I'd, be well, I'd be open to sit down with you at any time to maybe explore ideas and see if we can together come up with different so ideas. So I would like the ideas to, to generate funding that come from people who pass through versus the residents. And that, and that uh, Mrs. Gross, is one of the reasons that we did pass the JEDS but I'll tell you what, at the time that the state, so that the, if the whole local government fund came about years and years and years ago when Ohio passed a state income tax and they struck a deal with the local governments at that time, they, there was the argument was made, if the state takes a local income tax or takes an income tax, that's gonna affect the local government's ability to, to have, be able to tax their citizens for police, fire, roads, all the things that they do. And so there was an agreement reached that the state would always give X amount of money that our, our tax dollars that go to the state, it would come back to the local governments. They, the state government, because they spent like fools and were, had a big deficit, they just said, fine, we're going to break the agreement, we're going to take your money, and we're going to keep it. And that's what happened. And then, but they had passed the JEDS procedure to allow us... Uh, basically for townships to have an income tax. And so um, what did they do when uh, townships started passing the JEDS? They abolished it or they, they uh, restricted it in such a way that um, most townships now can't use it the way that we did. So there is a, there is a definite, uh, maybe not so much today, but in the prior administration, there was an anti-local government uh, movement in Columbus and and we have tried to be as creative as we can the JEDS is kind of a way for people who don't live here to have to share in some of our expenses but the thing that we have to remember is that uh, townships we are statutory forms of government we can only do we only have the powers that the state gives us and if we don't have a law that says we can do it we can't do it no, Unfortunately, and I, I, coming from Crosby, I'm very familiar with that area. Actually, I did a lot of hunting over there years ago. But apples and oranges to here. Obviously, oh, we're much more absolutely. urban. Different issues. Our biggest much budget more went to the fire department. I'm sorry. Our yeah. largest portion of our budget went to the fire department. Yeah, completely. I understand. <laughs> it's very different. This is this is like a. Metropolis compared to sure, Crosby, yeah, yeah. so I, I get that. Yeah. And then one final request, having had two spine fusions, if you guys are going to repair the roads, can you repair eastbound Galbraith going down to Reagan Highway because that right lane is horrendous. Just, I, I, here's what I'll, I'll say to that. One, that's a county road, so that's maintained by Hamilton County. Um, Probably most of the roads out in Crosby were probably all county as well. So that, that is a county road. Um, but well, the an, the stay tuned. Can't. Stay tuned yeah. because we, we probably will be working with the county and some other um, entities to have that done in the next year or two. That right lane really yeah, what happens is you have a lot of trucks that stop and it pushes the asphalt. Yeah, but we, we're, we're looking, we're, we're going to, I was just actually talking with our director of infrastructure, Mike before the meeting started tonight about that particular project in that street. So, yeah, we have something in the works. Great, thank, mm -hmm. you. thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to uh, speak tonight? Hi. Hi. Hello. Um, my name is Chris Thorpe. I'm on the Holly Tree. I spoke to you recently. Um, I have a couple of questions just kind of about things in general. Um, first of all, what is being done? We talk about spending money and how much it's going to cost, what are we doing to control those costs? I mean, is it just, this is what, the, this is what they say it's going to cost, and so we just are kind of 
at the mercy of contractors. How exactly is the money being spent? Yeah, and, and do, do you want me you to come have, so, that or have Mike respond? Well, go ahead. There's a number. And Mike, jump in here. So, as, as Mr. Hunnell indicated, because we're a creature of the state, sure. there, there's a requirement for sealed bids, public bidding. So anytime, again, going back to the state, I feel like I'm throwing them under the bus a lot. <clears throat> However, it's the facts. The state has indicated, and not indicated, but the law says that any project that's going to exceed $50,000 has to be publicly bid. Okay. So just about every road project we do exceeds $50,000. So with that being said, we have to bid it out. Then we get sealed back from contractors, paving contractors, and we have to go with the lowest and best bid. Here's the other beautiful part about it. So there's no point at which you go, okay, all of these are too much? We can, but we can, but we'll just okay. have to rebid it or the project doesn't get done. I understand. No, so so at some had... point you have to say, okay, wait a minute. The, you know, Here, here's these why guys are so all playing the same game. The latest bid, we had six bidders. Here's why they're so expensive. is because the, the state law also says that we have to pay prevailing wage. So what that means is... I know it, yeah. Yeah, true. so if, if, if that paving crew was paving the parking lot at Kroger's last week and the guy's getting paid $15 an hour, when he gets a job for local government because of public bidding and prevailing wage, he's now probably making $25 to $30 an hour that we have to pay. That's state law. We can't get around it. So the bottom line is, could we, pave, could we cut our costs in half if we could self-perform a lot of this work? Sure, but the state prohibits it. State prohibits the, the township from doing their own work. Anything over fifty thousand dollars, we have to bid it out to a contractor. That's, that's nuts. Okay, talking about the state, there was a lot of talk about the state and the cutting the local government funds. Kasich hasn't been governor for over a year. We have, you know, a, a new governor. Is anything being done to pressure upwards to say, okay, what is going on? Why are we not getting this money back? Because we, you know, you said yourself, Mr. Burning, that that you know it was Kasich positioning himself to run for government, you know, to run for president, and making himself look good. Hey, I balance the budget. He's no longer in charge. So what are we doing to pressure upwards to get some of that money to come back down to us that we're paying to the state? Mm -hmm. Our, my taxes didn't go down. I'm sure yours didn't go down. So where's, where's that money? Why, why aren't we getting that money back? It's being pushed by the legislature. And, you know, we've gone to Columbus and spoken up there and tried to get, you know, I mean, I can tell you the amount of attention that we get when we go up there is minimal. I mean, they just don't care. I'm sorry. I don't mean to call them out, but a lot of them don't care. And but what they are, they there are people pushing the governor to reinstate some of the local government funds. So far, he has not done that. But it, yes, it, it's not like it's in a vacuum and nobody's, well, we're not going to ever get it back, so forget it. No, it continued it continue to be an issue under Governor Kasich, mm -hmm. and it continues to be an issue under Governor DeWine today, where you know our legislatures are pushing to at least give some of the local government funds back. Okay. To this point, we've not been able to get it, get them to do that. It's incrementally increasing a little bit. They changed the formula slightly. They've done some things that I think are probably more ceremonial than they are substantive. But you know, asking what you can do is write your state legislatures, write your your rep and, and your senators, because when we go up as a local elected officials, they just and, think you want the money. Yeah. Well, they, they obviously they know that, yeah. but. The, we're there obviously representing you, mm -hmm. but we get much more traction if they hear from constituents versus people that work for the government or that are the government. Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand that. Um, I, I will tell you that, that uh, I know myself, Chris, several people from this board, we have taken you know days off, gone to Columbus, testified before the House committees, testified before Senate committees, we fought this stuff, you know, uh, harder than almost anybody. We actually, we kind of made, uh, we were in partnership with uh, Shaker Heights, Ohio, if you recall. There was just, there was a number of communities that were particularly hit hard by the tax cuts that they did. And we had some communities in Dayton and all around the state. And we did everything we could to, um, <laughs> you know, petition them to persuade them. But I can tell you, sometimes I was up there on one hearing, and one of the reps from Southwest Ohio comes in 
uh, sees me out in the hall and he's like, Joe, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm here to testify against, you know, House Bill, whatever. And he was like, he was like, man, he was like, I can't believe you. You know, it's like, what do you think? You're wrecking our governments. You know, the, we're the governments that supply the services yeah. to the people. They don't do that, you know. Here, here's, what it boil, here's what it boils down to in my experience 20 years of dealing with the state level is that those individuals there talk to constituents once every four years when they're running for office. Sure, yeah. I they don't hear from you or they don't, they, they don't have to hear from you until they want to. Unlike this board, you can come and do this every month if you want to. Fair enough. You can't do that at the state level, so that's why you're out of sight, out of mind until they come around for election time again. Well, because I have the microphone and I'm talking to you, yeah. uh, the, 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 the final thing I want to say is that, I mean, it, it just from, a, from a, just a standard taxpayer perspective, it just feels like, first of all, nothing ever goes away. As soon as, as, soon as there's a fee assessed or a tax assessed, it never goes away. Right. And then there's all, uh, even in the last year, it was $5 for the, for the Western Hills Viaduct. Another five dollars on, 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 and then it's well eleven and a half cents for gas tax, and then so and our prices go up because the the diesel prices go up, and then now now it's just at what point are taxpayers tapped out? That's that really is it. It just feels like we're totally tapped out because nothing ever goes away, and that's that's it. Chris, I ask that question all the time. I sit on this board and I ask the same question. You can ask Chris how many times I've asked him. A lot. At what point <laughs> is it, you know, it's not sustainable. You can't just, I mean, the schools, you, you think Finneytown schools are high in Springfield Township? Why don't you move on up here to North Winton Wood schools where they just passed the levy to build all new schools mm -hmm. and now this year they have on a levy for oh, more money to pay them. for op operating expenses. Oh, exactly. And our taxes are much higher, even with Finneytown's new schools, our taxes are much higher over here than they are in Finneytown. I'm not complaining, I'm just telling you, believe me, I agree, what you said, I say it all the time. How can they continue, the schools just keep saying, I need more, I need more, I need oh, more. We'd apparently be willing to give it to them too, so. <laughs> I don't have a choice. Yeah, I know. But then you have the, I mean, the roads cost twice as much as they did before. And they're not going to get cheaper in the next is, decade. Is there any pushback on the whole prevailing wage thing? I mean, because, again, we talk it's about the, the state union. mandates. It's the unions. Yeah. yeah. But, this, but how, how can we push back on that? Because, you know, at some point, again, it becomes we're, we're, taxed to, we're taxed to the point of just, you know, going insane. And we're still not getting what we need to for, as far as services are concerned. So what, what can be done besides, you know, call, you know, call state representatives and, and you know, hold your breath until you turn blue. I mean, what, what actually can be done? We, that's all we can do, and that's what we do. We call them and talk about these issues constantly. We belong to the Ohio Township Association, and then there's a, there's a subgroup of that called CLOUT, and they, they love when I throw out acronyms. The, the Coalition of the Large Ohio Urban Townships. So there's probably 25 50, or 30 of us, 50. about 50 of us throughout the state that are you know, between 20 to 60,000 in population and certain size of geographical area. So we have different needs in these, in, in these large urban townships than say the Crosby's of the world. We have completely different needs. So we, we formed a subgroup to initiate a legislative agenda just for these townships. Because unfortunately, most state reps and senators, their townships that they represent are the Crosby's, are the very small ones. We are anomaly. They're, they're like, what do you mean you have 40,000 people? What do you mean you have all these? They don't understand that we have townships that are this big and that the township laws that are on the books now are catered and geared toward those smaller rural areas and not the larger urban ones like us with our infrastructure needs and things that we have here. So we You're saying our own people don't understand this? Our, our own representatives don't understand no, this? No, because or they, just they, a, if, you're in, if you're in eastern Ohio, Ohio yeah, 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 sure. you don't have any big cities. You, the, all, all, you have a few maybe small cities, and then you have rural townships. I mean, there's mm -hmm. 1,300 townships in the state of Ohio. Yeah. I lived in Highland County yeah. for a dozen years. And only, yeah. only 50 yeah. of them, yeah. or, you know, I think it's 15,000 or more, get you into the cloud group. So 1,250 of them are 15,000 or less. Yeah. So and we, if you see some of the guys... At the, we were just at the Ohio Township Association uh, conference in Columbus a couple weeks ago, and a lot of these guys are farmers. 
Oh, I knew some of them. They become trustees, <laughs> and they may drive the snowplow, mm -hmm. you know, for the local roads or whatever. They may do, I mean, it's, it's a totally different thing, yeah. and that's why we created Cloud, so we could go to legislature and say, hey, there might be 1,300 townships in the state, but these you know, more 25 have 30,000 or more residents. We're bigger than a lot of cities. You need, you know, we need to, you need to hear us because we're not like all these other smaller townships. We're a big township, and your laws are not very friendly to us. So we do that. We create a legislative agenda, and some of the things that we talk about are, it's called force account. So when I, when I refer to that ceiling of $50,000 that we can self-perform, under the law, it's called a force account project. We try and get that pushed all the time, and they're hesitant. Well, it's because of the union labor as well as I'm sure that those paving companies make pretty big contribution checks to campaign. I think? <laughs> so the, the point is, is that we do everything you're asking us to do, we do it. Okay. Um, it's just we can't wait until the light bulb goes off in Columbus for us to actually act here. So we're trying to implement things here and at the same time simultaneously try and change the laws, but we still have to do things here along the way, and, that, and that's kind of what we're doing here today. And I'll say, you know, you talked about taxes, and you're absolutely right, but, and I might as well say it now, I mean, we're, we're looking at possible additional needs in police and fire soon, too. It's been over almost 10 years since they've had an increase in revenue, and those are, you know, very labor-intensive departments oh, that don't get any cheaper e easier uh, either and equipment's expensive and you know you talked about you talked about some of the, the trustees plow the snow they probably have two or three snow plows and it probably doesn't take them that long to plow the streets in those areas we have 13 snow plow trucks and it takes each one of our route drivers 12 hours to do one route so again it's just com okay. the 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 expense of, of operating a, an organization of this size is pretty immense no, I understand that, and I appreciate your time, and I appreciate yeah. you know the, the, the challenges things, that you have. Yeah. With all the state has done to us, last year the city decided to get in the act, and they tried to pass, the Greater Cincinnati Water Works tried to raise the water rates on townships only. Yeah. Didn't they succeed in that? I thought they succeeded in They that. did not. They and why did we my went, water bill go up? We we went to, well, the water the bill, went up, bill went up. The sewer bill went up. They wanted to raise your water prices from 1.33 to 1.51 just for townships. Yeah, I, I, and yeah. we tried to have meetings with them, and then they went to one meeting and we started asking for, okay, prove to us that it costs more to ship it to townships because it's gotta come through our pipes to get to Springdale, so I don't know how it's cheaper to send it to Springdale than it is to Springfield. They showed up for one meeting and then they just refused to speak to us or do anything, so we went to court and got a restraining temporary restraining order against them and fought the fight over the next, it took, what, seven, yeah, I mean, the all total. The commissioners and the prosecutor's office. Finally, at the end of the day, they agreed to yeah. sign a contract for a long-term contract at the rate that everybody else is paying. But they just arbitrarily decided to raise 15% on township water bills. Wow. And so I appreciate you fighting that one. Well, there's threats in all quarters <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> And I will, I will say one thing. You started off your comments about, you know, well, maybe if it's just too high, don't accept it. We did just have that. We, we had some bids done on some work that had to be done in the buildings here in the back. We got a quote to replace the roof on the, on the grove back there, and we said, this is nuts. We're not, and so we didn't do it. We just we chose not to accept that bid. So we don't just accept them just if we get one. If they're, if they're out of whack, we'll, you know, and right now the, la the labor market is, the, the contractor said, I think he might have been the only contractor that bid on, he said, I can't even get a roofer to quote it. So I just threw in a big number. And we said, okay, well, thank you for that. Well, we're not taking it, you know. So we do turn down bids. Thank you. And, and one good piece of news that came tonight is, yeah. we can talk about that, yeah. can't we? Yeah. So we just had a bid opening to do Long Lane and right. Brentwood Heights. Brentwood Heights, and it came in three hundred thousand less than the engineer's estimate. So that was a great. That was some good news. We That's got. what it works, right? There you go. Yeah, yeah. So we were very happy to get that, and we had six people bid it. Yeah. Which is a lot. Normally we had two or three. We had six bidders, which is good. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And one thing I want to say is that at the end of the day, we're township residents. 
and you know what the taxes that are imposed, the fees are imposed, affects us as well. So um, each and every day we try to be good stewards of your money because it's our money as well. So when you talk about creative ways, uh, thinking outside the box on how to generate revenue, this board works very hard along with um, uh, Chris Gilbert and all of our staff here at the township to, uh, to do what's in the best interest and, and be good stewards of, of taxpayer dollars. So. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Who are um, I missed the call. Deborah O. Stryker, oh, Mockingbird Lane. Um, so I appreciate you all taking the time to explain to us, um, you know, how the funding is working with that. Um, the only creative ideas I can think of, too, which is a little bit random and totally out of the norm, would be maybe to think about a restructure on Springfield Township. You know, if, if the laws aren't fitting where we're at, perhaps we can fit where the laws are. If there's a way that we could do something to kind of work that, I know, again, that's kind of random, but um, so, you know, as a small business in Springfield Township, I have bid with the state of Ohio. I'm familiar with all the political BS that goes with it, and I have those contracts currently, so I understand that. So my question, though, um, outside of that, is just, you know, I've been in the township for 50 years. I grew up here. My mother lives here. Um, I own a home here. So... I've owned my home for 25 years on Mockingbird Lane. I have yet to see the surface repaired. Is that a township road? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was repaired the year I moved in there. So my mom, on the other hand, is on a dead-end street with less than 15 houses. Hers has been repaired three times now. It's a dead-end street at the end of Meredith. No one is even going there unless you live there. So I was a little baffled when I was trying to figure out, well, how come hers is repaved three times versus yeah. ours hasn't even been repaved once, and it's a thoroughfare. I mean, Mockingbird is a thoroughfare. So um, you did help to explain, though, that there, there's levels of the damage to the roads, and I guess you're trying to keep it from getting worse. But yeah. again, dead-end streets, in my opinion, should not be a priority. And for the sake of you looking like you're doing more with the money, perhaps, you know what I mean, if you got a more visible road. You know what I mean? Like, I know her road was what repaired, normally, just, but other people don't. Just you know? so you know, what normally <laughs> happens is if we're doing a main thoroughfare right. and there's a couple of small uh, dead-end streets coming off of it, a lot of times, Mike, you can jump in if you want, but a lot of times it's not that much more for us because they're there, their equipment's there, their guys are there. So doing sometimes a small dead end street isn't, it, it's a lot cheaper to do it when they're there doing the main road like when we did uh, Hempstead. We did some other roads with that, but we also partnered with Hamilton County was doing Daly Road. So we bid Daly Road, Hempstead and the side streets all together to get a better price for the county for their part and for our part. So, I mean, Sometimes you see a, a side street and you think, well, why would they do that? Well, if we're doing the main road, we might do a side street because it might be an insignificant difference to get that done and it it's, gets it out of the way. Yeah, and for me, it didn't even make sense for that end of Meredith also because, again, not a thoroughfare. <laughs> let, me, let, me, right. let, me jump in, let me jump in here just yes. real quick. When you're comparing Meredith to Mockingbird, you have two different levels of deterioration. Uh, Meredith falls into the category of pavement preservation. We were able to go in there and just mill off an inch and a half and put new pavement there. I'm assuming you're referring to what would be the east side of Meredith because the township does not maintain the west side of Meredith. Is that right. correct? Right. Okay. Yeah. So on the east side of Meredith, you don't have any curves. Mockingbird, you do. That right. for repair and replacement is going to <laughs> significantly increase the cost. Getting back to the deterioration, when it comes to your section, Mockingbird, it's going to fall in the category of red and almost fail. Right? It is also contiguous to uh, Fountain Blue. We've been holding off on making very much so needed improvements to Fountain Blue until we knew what the schools were doing. The last thing we wanted to do was go in and rehabilitate and rebuild Fountain Blue and Mockingbird and then have construction traffic come behind and destroy those newly paved streets. 
So looking ahead on a five-year plan and now knowing what the schools are going to do, we're going to go after the grant dollars that the board and Mr. Gilbert was alluding to to get Mockingbird and Fountain Blue rehabilitated at the same time or shortly after the school improvements are performed. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's why, those, that that's why the improvements haven't been performed to date. We went after Hempstead because it was the, the one road that the town was <coughs> with the highest traffic now. Mockingbird is shortly behind that, right. but we've got this, this stuff going on with the school. Right. The school district was not sure if what they were going to do, if they were going to move, if they were going to rebuild there, if they were going to move to an all new location, all of that we were waiting to find out what exactly their plan was because we didn't want to fix Fountain Blue and then turn around and they come in and bring in equipment and tear the whole road up all over again. And then we'd be repairing it in five years instead of 20 years. I'm, I'm on this section between Hempstead and Galbraith, so. Okay. <laughs> okay. I just meant that section, so. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I understand. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board? No. All right, uh, it appears that there is not. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming this evening. We do appreciate your concerns. These are real concerns. We know the taxes are high here. Um, we're doing everything we can to be good stewards of your money, and we're doing everything we can to find alternate sources of funding. We've probably beaten every other jurisdiction in Southwest Ohio for getting grants. Um, I really don't want that secret to get out. To all be cut, looking, you know, trying to figure out what we do. Or to hire Mike. Yes, yeah. but um, seriously, thank you for coming, and uh, we'll take all this into consideration. And the comments we received uh, at our last uh, public hearing, uh, as we move forward with this. Um, and with that, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? All right. Aye. We're glad you all came. You're all, yep. you're all welcome so to come to the meetings whenever you want. If you'd like to speak, we'd more, we're more than happy to. Hey, March 10th is our next meeting. A, a township.